Welcome everybody to tonight's uh, public works meeting. Um, it is 7 p.m. Uh, is this meeting publicly noted? Meeting has been properly noticed and posted according to law. Fantastic. And are we recording tonight? We are. Great. Well, we have one agenda item for this evening, and that is to consider Southeast Area Combined Sewer Improvements Construction Inspection and Project Management Requests for Proposals uh, based on project meeting number eight. Um, tonight we have a uh, presenter, Leanne Bushlick, who will guide us through this agenda item. Um, <laughs> so in your um, packet this evening, there was a draft mm -hmm. um, request for proposals, and this is for construction inspection and management services. Um, just as a bit of background for people who may not have been here quite as long, um, uh, with certain projects, we have moved toward a model where we um, award a or come to a project professional services agreement for engineering and inspection. So, for example, we did that on our most recent alley project. We did that on the two alley projects prior. We did it on two or three water main projects prior. Um, the board, in this particular case, at staff's recommendation, elected to split these two items for a couple of reasons. Um, but the primary one was that the, ins uh, the design engineering portion of this project was awarded a, a number of years ago. We've been working on this for some time. And the thought was that it really would be difficult for anyone, and perhaps not in the village's best interest, to lock into a, an inspection contract three to four years prior to the actual construction. Yeah. Um, it would be very difficult for any consultants to, to accurately gauge or forecast those costs. And, and in doing so, they would likely make sure that they didn't have any exposure, you know, which obviously meant the village would was covering that exposure. So um, decided that on a project of this size and, um, and this nature, these would be separate. So it may be that the engineering firm is different than the construction services firm. Um, depending on who you ask, they're there. Well, there are pros and cons to each. Sometimes it's great. I mean, there are many reasons it's a really good idea to have your inspector be your, um, your design engineer. One example is if they have questions, they have an easy and ready reference to go back to. They're part of the same firm. There's no, um, there's no need for creating a separate agreement so that they can talk to each other or the village having to be the goal between between those questions. Um, I think the, the the contrary argument, which is a good one, is that you then you have two set of eyes on the problem, right? You have an engineer and you have someone who's building it that can say, whoa, wait a minute, is this right? Mm -hmm. Do we want to do it this way? Maybe we have a better. So, you know, there's pros and cons to each. Um, I would fully expect that Strand, who is our design engineer, will submit a proposal to be the inspector in construction services um, consultant, but that'll obviously be up to the board. Mm -hmm. um, so this, the draft RFP that you have before you is for the construction inspection and management services for phase one of the combined Southeast Area Combined Service Project. So phase one is 2023. Um, we will do a, another of these exercises in 2023 to retain a consultant for 2024. Um, and then the 2026, which is phase three, will be folded into the WSTAT project. So WSTAT's inspection, we will have a separate agreement with WSTAT to inspect the underground work associated with this project during that. And who selected that? That manager they, with, they, with that with will. Okay. Um, they have a number of firms that they will typically work with. Um, and so I'm, I'm not aware of it, but they probably already have one in mind. Yeah. Um, so um, I would say that the primary difference between this um, construction inspection RFP and, and some previous ones, certainly that you would have seen, 
um, is that this also holds in management services, which we typically don't do on smaller projects. Um, if, if you had the opportunity to really read it, um, I think you'll note my comment here that as a whole, this project represents the largest single infrastructure investment in the village's recent history. So really something well beyond the scope of anything we've ever done um, and, and are looking to get some additional support from the consultant involved as it relates to just managing the project, um, being a point for resident contact, even more so than they usually are, um, and then also helping us and guiding continued outreach throughout this phase of the project. Otherwise, the, the inspection part is pretty standard. Um, I would expect there'll be some specialization required um, just because of this, this the size, um, specialization is the right word. So for example, on an alley project or a typical um, street reconstruction project, we will usually have one inspector assigned to the project. If they're on vacation or something, you know, occasionally someone else from that firm will step in to cover those hours. Um, but this one, we are very clearly going to need a minimum of two inspectors. Mm -hmm. The second and or third may not certainly need to be full time. But there are going to be activities under this that are going to require more than one set of eyes mm -hmm. within the project area at any given moment. So um, typically, you know, when we when we do um, typical cost estimations, and this varies greatly, but as a general rule of thumb, you estimate um, a construction project. Six to eight percent of the value of that project is what you would expect to spend on engineering, and ten percent of the value of that project is what you might expect to spend on construction. So we're talking about a seven million dollar project, and you can do the math, right? So big deal, but really important when you're spending that kind of money to make sure that it's being done right and that people um, are. People, when I say people, I mean residents um, are, you know, have access to questions, answers, help, facilitation. Um, you know, this is this is going to be a, for some of the the residents in the area. This is going to be a second straight year of major construction outside their front door. Have we been getting complaints? Um, we've been getting concerns. Which sometimes are the same thing, but you know, not always. Yeah. Um, and for the most part, given given what they're going through, I think residents have been incredibly patient. Mm -hmm. But you know, two years in a row is a is a lot to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I think it's really important that we have someone um, who can assist us with some of the things that people are going to be concerned about that they might otherwise just decide isn't worth. Isn't worth having a conversation. You just get to the point where, yeah. right, we get it. So we want to be planned for that and be mindful of that and kind of expect that so we can all adjust to the shoulder extra. And we're thinking the completion of that is going to be December 2023. My, I don't know at this point my expectation. So typically on a contract, we'll have what's called substantial completion and final completion. Substantial completion is generally defined as the project can be used for its intended purpose. So if it's a sewer project, you can flush, it goes away, and it goes where it's supposed to go, right? If it's a road project, you can drive on it, et cetera. So I would expect that substantial completion will probably be sometime in late November, maybe early December would be my guess. Just there's a lot to do. Um, final completion. I'm hoping that it'll be in this calendar year. Uh, final completion generally means then you've done all the restoration work, you've done all the little things that were still necessary and part of the contract, but but for necessary for it to be used for its intended purpose. Sure. You're not doing much restoration in November and December, so you know whatever that's going to be is going to have to be addressed differently. Um, but it's it's possible the the final completion date will go into 
early 2024, depending on where that substantial falls. Um, after that substantial completion date passes, we prepare what's called a punch list. Um, and typically that's just sort of a, a laundry list of little things that we need to go back to and, and correct and get right. Um, so that we got we go through that and then we'll certify final completion. Um, every items, particularly restoration items, will generally have a year warranty. So if we had to go back because grass didn't grow or a tree died or mm -hmm. that, then that would all be covered. Um, so usually, you know, when you see a project's done, for us it's not really done until a year later. We're monitoring, oh, okay. we're doing paperwork. <laughs> So that's really, I mean, if you want me to go to, into detail in some of the tasks, I can certainly do that, but that gives you the big picture as to how, what we're asking for, how this differs. The one thing I, I did not address that I need to is in, under each task, um, in the narrative description, there is a sentence that says the level of effort is estimated at X hours. Um, we will fill that number in prior to your September meeting. Okay. There, we're kind of in between 60 and 90% plans right now. They're working mm -hmm. toward the end. So mm -hmm. by the end of this month, they're going to, I'm going to be asking the design engineer to estimate those hours. Um, in the past, we have not done that. And we've gotten wildly different proposals for the very same project. So I think it's in everybody's best interest for us just to say, well, we expect that you're going to need a minimum of this number of hours. Mm -hmm, sure. Um, and maybe they think it's less, but maybe they think it's, you know, that at least gives us a bit more right. of a bread box. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, we have not ever done that before, but we're going to try it on this project just to yeah. communicate an expectation. Great. I think that's good. I think the professional services are pretty used to that, right? And yeah, like a range maybe it's like okay you say minimum of 15 hours a week for each thing and then they know if they come in between 12 and 16 that's good or whatever oh, fantastic thank you leanne um do you guys have any other questions um so we get this out at the main board will get this out in september so it'll go if, if you approve the draft um we it will go to the village board um, on the 6th first Tuesday. Um, at, at that point, when I redo the cover memo, I'll point out, you know, anything that might have changed since your recommendation, which would be, you know, these hours. And then as we continue to review, if we find anything we need to treat, sure. you know, I just point that out. Um, if they approve it, then I will, the very next day, have it on our website. Um, typically, what I do is um, we'll email sort of a, hey, engineering firms, we got this thing, you might want to check it out. Um, then we also publish it in Daily Reporter, which is a trade publication. Um, that's, you know, typically that's not the kind of services you find there, but that's okay because maybe, so. Um, but that's sort of, that's how we typically try to get it in front of the people who need to see it. But they're all driven to our website because it's posted on the website. Yeah. And there's additional project information there. But that that would go live the next day. Sure. Um, the the daily reporter publication I would go the very next publication date that I can get it sure. in because I I don't I generally don't say like run it Wednesday because something weird happens. I don't when it running right yeah, so then yeah. i'd have to wait until if i ask them to publish wednesday the weekly three times a week so my guess oh. is that means it'll publish the following monday mm -hmm. but um the deadline is the 30th of september so mm -hmm. those couple of days everybody does it this week yeah. okay that was my second <laughs> question when do we expect to get that get them back in so. never get well <laughs> we rarely get them early yeah. we usually get them about 11 o'clock Okay. If they're doing <laughs> which is fine. Uh, then what do you what do you expect like the um, the the outcome to be with the firms applying for this? Do you feel like they'll be 
Is it low interest? You... I, I hope I hope so. Yeah. Um, it's it's a, it's a big deal, right. especially a big Water deal hand. for us. Yeah. You know, this is nothing for large companies out like Milwaukee or so on. But for us, it's a real big deal. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm hoping labor market is weird. I mean, you, everybody knows, right? It's hard to get mm. people for almost anything these days. So. I move that the Southeast Area Combined Sewer Improvement Construction Inspection and Project Management Request or Proposal be forwarded for Village Board consideration. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Passes. On to the Village Board. Okay. Look. Comment. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 716. <laughs> Sorry, you're going to drug that on. Oh, boy, that. <laughs> I do have.